Hello out there, uh, YouTubers. Uh, EC Street Preacher here. Um, not very happy. The uh, I just got back uh, street preaching from Greenville, and um, you can probably tell by the uh, the title to this video that uh, things did not go well with the police while I was there, and I'm not very happy about it. I complied mostly out of necessity because I'm driving to uh, New Orleans uh, tomorrow or later on today. This is after midnight. So, you know, it'd be tough for me to drive to New Orleans um, if I'm in jail. So I didn't really press the issue. Uh, when I return, I will be calling uh, the police department in Greenville trying to get this straightened out but if I have to um, really press this issue I'm going to do it um, I've preached in Greenville several times over months and this is the first time uh, anybody's really ever um, put any kind of restrictions on my freedom of speech and um, you know I'll you'll, you'll, you'll see what happens on the video um, uh, but, yeah, just very, very disappointed. I mean, this is really the only time I've, I've had any kind of uh, real difficulty um, with, the, with the Greenville Police Department. And hopefully we can get all of this uh, settled out, you know, settled and done. But um, anyway, here's the video. Okay, uh, EC Street Preacher out here. A um, little bit different camera angle uh, this time. Uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, kind of do this kind of old school the way I used to do it uh, way back when. Um, had some issues lately with the sound, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get my gloves on real quick. Apologize if the camera angle goes kind of weird, but I need to make sure I don't get frostbite anywhere it's not really cold right now but it might get cold a little bit later so I just like being prepared okay um back. but I kind of wanted to get used to like trying to trying to hold something besides the uh, the sound issue um, I kind of wanted to get uh, used to holding the sign because uh, I'll be in New Orleans next week I could be holding the sign the whole time you know uh, when I'm out uh, you know preaching uh, with the with the uh, super conference so I uh, thought I'd give that a try I might move this stool I think it's a little too close right now but I uh, watched my earlier video the way I used to do it. I used to just have the sign and uh, hold on to the camera on the sign. I try to do it that way. So we're going we're gonna to try that tonight and uh, try my best to keep this thing steady as best I can. But another good benefit of this is, you know, if someone comes up and starts talking to you, you can just turn the camera towards them, you know, if you're talking to somebody. And, you know, that helps a lot, too. Um, but, yeah, but I came here to preach, so it's time to get started. EC Street Preacher out here tonight to preach the gospel, to speak against all the sin that's going on around here. All you got to do is look at all these bars, all these places selling this alcohol to know that this is a place of sin, that this is a dark place. That this is a place of destruction. The people out here are gonna be drinking alcohol. I'm move this camera up so. Smoking their cigarettes. And all the time the devil's laughing at you. He's saying, yeah, drink that alcohol. Smoke those cigarettes. He wants to see you in hell. 
and you were never meant to go to hell. But you deserve it. Because you're sinful. How many people out here believe they deserve to go to hell? If anyone said no, you're wrong. Everyone deserves to go to hell. When they sin, how many sins have you committed today? Each sin buys you a one-way ticket to hell. How many tickets have you gotten today? How many tickets have you gotten in your whole life? <clears throat> Wages of sin is death. And of course, sin would like to kill your physical body, but it wasn't talking about your physical body in that verse. Wages of sin is death is talking about eternal death, going to hell. And yes, we all deserve to go to hell. No one likes to hear it. The truth hurts, but yes, everyone deserves to go to hell. Even me. I used to be a sinner. And I loved my sin. But when Jesus made Himself real to me, I turned my back on sin. And now I don't sin. Because I repented. Repentance means to change your mind. Change your mind about sin. You're not making excuses for it. You're not believing like these false teachers that say, well, you're covered by grace. God understands. This is the same God that commanded you to be perfect. This is the same God that said, be ye holy for I am holy. Did he all of a sudden change his mind and say, well, okay, you know, it's a different time now. You know, you can sin all you want. I, you can just, just make sure you ask for forgiveness later. Of course not. All you got to do is look to the Bible. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Shall we, con shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? God forbid. How can we, who are dead to sin, live any longer therein? So all this, once saved, always saved, just say this nice little prayer, and you'll be bound for heaven. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. God commands you to holiness. You are to live holy. And how can you live holy when you're drinking alcohol, when you're smoking cigarettes? When you're having sex outside of marriage. And I'm talking about marriage between a man and a woman. Five people in black robes did not change the marriage of definition in God's eyes. He created it, a man and a woman for life. And one day, those five people in black robes are going to be judged for what they said. And I pray to God that they repent before they die. Because they have bought themselves a one-way ticket to hell. Once you get in, you can't get out. Yes, try to drown out the preacher. Yes. I'm just trying to make sure people go to heaven and not to hell. The way Jesus talks about hell is probably not a place where you want to be for eternity. So what do you need to do? You need to live a holy life. You need to put down the bottle and pick up the Bible. You need to put down the bong and pick up the Bible. You need to change your wardrobe and stop dressing like a whore. Are you tired of men at treating you like a whore? I got an idea. Why don't you stop dressing like one? That would solve the problem, wouldn't it?
which I never really understood that. Why would you attract a man through physical means, through revealing clothing? Why would you attract a man that way? You're attracting him through lust. You're attracting him through lust. And I got bad news for you. Lust is never satisfied. So even if he marries you, he's going to start asking for different things. He's going to start asking for different things because you're feeding his lust. That lust is never satisfied. After a while, he's going to want sodomy. He's going to want oral sex. You better be ready for that. Let me give you a tip for sodomy. Just keep a pack of frozen peas in the freezer. What are you talking about? Sodomy. I'm talking about women who attract men through physical means, through lust. And you know, lust is never satisfied. Never. No. Talk to him. He needs he need none of that. No, I do know that. Lust, lust has a job. It's to kill you. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, you lust? need to repent. Who is lust? Lust is a spirit. Lust is your own flesh working against you. Okay. Because you got, you got, you got uh, your flesh that wants to be satisfied by certain things. And then you've got man's way, and then you've got God's way. You can mock and scoff if you want. They did the same thing in Noah's day. And they all drowned. They all drowned. They said, Noah, you're crazy. It's not going to flood. Noah, you're talking about water falling from the sky? Bursting up from the ground? Are you crazy, Noah? They were pointing at his boat and laughing, saying, look at that. Noah thinks it's going to flood. But nobody went with them. Just his wife, his sons, and their wives. Eight people, that's all. Only people that were convinced that there was going to be a flood. took the animals with them and God closed the door and that was it. When God closed that door there was no chance for anybody else. And then the rain started to fall. And then the water started bursting up from the ground. People wanted to believe then. They went to that ark and they beat on that ark. They said, let us in Noah. We believe you now. But it was too late. And one day it's going to be too late for you. You don't know when you're going to die. I hope everybody out here, everybody that hears me tonight, lives a long time after tonight. But the sad truth is, I'm talking to some people tonight that I will never get a chance to talk to again. You need to repent and get right with Jesus. just out here tonight concerned about where you're going to spend eternity Jesus talked about hell and these people talking about there really is no hell it's just an invention of the church are liars and false teachers and they will be judged for their lies there is a hell because Jesus talked about it he said weeping wailing gnashing the teeth does that sound like a place you want to go? Fire seven times hotter than fire here on earth? If you lit a match and put your finger in it, how long until you want to draw that finger back? Not long. And yet, you will be in that fire seven times hotter. Seven times hotter than here on earth for eternity. No getting out. Okay, I'm trying to fix my glove here. Plus, uh, this thing's make it a little bit, a little bit cold here. Some of us think that God approves of our sin because He's silent. 
Read Psalm 50. Read Psalm 50. It says, when God is silent, do not think it's approval. When God is silent, don't think it's approval. He's lining up your sins against you. That's Bible, people. But we think because God doesn't immediately strike us down that He's okay with the alcohol. He's okay with the smoking. He's okay with dressing up like a whore. He, we think God thinks that's okay because he, he doesn't strike us down. But the Word says He's lining up your sins against you. What I'm trying to prevent tonight is do my part to prevent 85,000 deaths. 85,000 people are going to die this year because of alcohol. Because of alcohol. 85,000. So I'm trying to prevent those deaths. Because if they die because of alcohol, they're probably drunk. I know somebody who's drunk. 2017. What's that supposed to mean? I hope they're not cheering for deaths. Well, maybe they're pro murder. So, yeah, that would that would explain it. That would explain it. So we're just out here tonight to warn you. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, how, how you doing? doing? All right, I'm off Lake at Grand Police Department. Okay. I just wanted to come talk to you for a minute. Um, mm -hmm. Just make sure you're not yelling obscenities at people, okay? Oh, I don't curse, yeah. I, I know, but I've heard uh, whore and slut since I've been out here, okay? I didn't say slut. I've said whore. Okay, well, let's let's not let's not use that type of language even though it's... You know, it, it it's can biblical. Be, I understand that, sir, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm just telling you the stipulations of you standing out here, okay? Mm -hmm. it, we're not gonna cause any disturbances. You can do what you're doing, just don't yell, okay? I could hear you over a, a half a block away, so just don't yell, and don't call anybody names to provoke any type of uh, violence or anything like that. Calling someone a whore will do that, okay? I understand it's biblical, and you have your beliefs, and you're free to stand out here and do all that, okay? I'm just telling you, don't cause any problems. Do we have an understanding? Well, I mean, there are court cases about this. You know, I, hecklers you, be those. You can talk, you can talk and, to me all about that. I, I, I've been working now here for 12 years. I understand everything mm -hmm. that you're going to say to me. I haven't told you you could not stand out here. I just told you don't take it beyond that point that it causes a problem. And as long as we don't do that, we're not going to have any issues. Okay? Well, I'm, I'm worried about the whole volume thing because, I mean, I'm just trying to be heard, you know. I'm not trying to... Okay, you can be heard without yelling, okay? If I uh -huh. can hear you all the way down there at 5th and Cotanch, that's a problem. That's disturbing the peace, okay? Okay, but you know... I, I know it's loud enough I can hear you a block away. We write tickets for people's music that can be heard that, that far away, uh -huh. okay? Do you understand where I'm coming from? When you're yelling like that, people are looking down the street to see where it's coming from. You can stand out here and talk all day long. Yeah. But but do not yell, okay? Can okay. You do, can you do that for me? Well, I mean, I'm just trying to say where's the where's the line at? I mean, you know, I, you, of course, of course, I want you know. I'm telling you. I, I, I can I can tone it down, but I just I just need to know how far I need to tone it down. Right. You know. It, 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 as long as I can't hear you uh, half a block away, we're okay. Okay. If you're trying to talk to someone across the street, that's one thing, but you don't need to be trying to yell loud enough for somebody a half a block or a whole block away can hear you, okay? Okay. That's all I'm asking. Okay, well, I mean, I can I can definitely tone it down a and, bit. And again, yeah. I understand the, the verbiage that you're using is biblical, and I understand where you're coming from with everything. Just understand that certain words will provoke people to react a certain way, and if it does and it causes a problem, you can be held accountable for it. Not saying that you would be, but just depending on the circumstances and what all comes out of it, okay? Well, I mean, the Supreme Court's already decided that. You, you can talk to me about case law all you want to. I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, I, I didn't say you've done anything that's constituted me taking any type of lawful action against you at this point, okay? Yeah. What I'm telling you is don't let it get to that point. It is 
9, 10, at 11 o'clock, this place is going to get really busy. There's going to be a lot of people out here. I don't want any problems. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, that's, that's probably about the time I'm, yeah, I usually leave around 11 o'clock, okay. thereabouts. Well, and so, again, yeah. uh, do your thing, okay? Just, okay. Just, uh, if you have any issues, let us know. We're here for you just as much as we are everyone else. We just don't want any problems, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. I think I jinxed myself earlier. I talked about <laughs> how cool they were. And now, uh, okay. All right. Well, um, I mean, I can definitely tone it down. As far as volume, you know, I mean, it's not like I'm yelling into a bullhorn or a horn or anything like that. You know, I'm just using my natural voice. Um, but they don't want me to use the word whore. So, um, which they said slut too, which I haven't said. I haven't said that yet. I think I have before out here. Okay, so I just got to regroup here and, uh, Okay, I'm out here tonight to preach the gospel and trying to tone it down. So we'll we'll try to do this decaf style, decaf version. <sighs> okay. Well, I mean, I gotta keep going. Oh, I'm out here preaching the gospel. Oh, the gospel. Yeah. I met you before. You talk good about it too, man. You know a lot about it. I do know a lot How about it. How you learn so much? Hmm? You learn from school? Going to preach in school? I learned from reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Yeah. You can know as much as I know or even I more if you just pick up your Bible and read it. I have read a lot, not too much. I understand it most of it. Mm -hmm. I understand it though, you know. Okay. You know, you gotta understand the word. God can teach you everything every day to live. It's better than better. It's better than better. Yeah, it's his love letter to you. Why don't you have a couple dollars on A couple dollars? Yeah, it's something to eat. I can do more than that. That's what I mean to eat. I can do more than that. Do it in New Jersey. Need something to eat? Okay. I can help you with that. My son, my daughter, my wife, he's waiting for me outside the shelter. They changed their pampers. They're just four months old and one just one. There you go. You just got a couple dollars. I just want to sleep tonight. Hotel room. That's what I got. That's what I got. You can get your sandwich with that. All right. That's five dollars right there. Okay, so I'm here tonight to preach the gospel. Let you know that your sin is out to kill you. Now, sin offers a little bit of pleasure. You drink that alcohol, you get a buzz. You smoke that marijuana, that wacky tobacco, you get high. You go shack up with some immoral person, you get an orgasm. Well, that's fun, isn't it? But there's a price to pay. Wages of sin is death. The end game, what that sin wants to do to you, is to kill you. <clears throat> now all this time you think it's just pleasurable. And then it doesn't satisfy, so you keep trying to feed it. Thinking that if you just do a little bit more, that's okay. And then it has to be more and more and more and more. Before you know it, you're a slave to it. You're a slave. And all this time you thought it was pleasurable. It's not. Not in the end. You ask any fisherman about catching fish. They'll say, you got to have good bait. You got to have good bait to catch that, catch that fish. So what you need to do is you need to put something on that hook that that fish is gonna want. <coughs> so we get all kinds of 
So you get the right bait. That's what sin does to you. Is that sin is going to give you that bait of pleasure. And then before you know it, before you know it, you're a slave to it. I just, ugh. that just really got to me because, I mean, if he knows all the court cases, then why is he even saying to me anything? I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, it's just, it's always been good before and now, uh, I had your night to preach the gospel, to preach against sin. I am totally a hate preacher. Totally a hate preacher. I hate sin. I can't stand sin. Even when other people are doing it. Because sin destroys lives, destroys people. And what is the second commandment that Jesus gave us? Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you're in sin, you're not loving your neighbor. You certainly aren't loving God. Because that sin gets between you and God. The camera's falling here. Okay. It's out here tonight to warn against this alcohol, against this smoking. Smoking tobacco, smoking marijuana, that wacky tobacco, living in sexual sin. The Bible has a strong warning against sexual sin. Not only are you sinning against God, the Bible says you're sinning against your own body when you sin sexually. Let's, let's stop watching the pornography. It's a scientific fact. Watching pornography makes you stupid. And sin itself is stupid. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Tell them, brother. Yeah. So pornography is sexual sin on display. So where is the origin of pornography? With the invention of the camera? With the invention of the motion camera? Is that where pornography started? Maybe in the 70s? Free love and all that? Or the 60s? Pornography started in the Bible. Yes, it did. Pornography started in the Bible. With King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And Queen Jezebel sets up these temples of Baal. And what did those temples of Baal have? They had live sexual acts for you to watch. A lot of people say when they read about when they read in the Bible, the Israelites. The Israelites worshiping Baal. They say to themselves, how in the world? How in the world could they do that? How could they turn away from God and worship Baal? Well, pornography. Then you got people that want to satisfy their flesh. Then, rather than satisfying God. We satisfy our flesh more than God. And that's how you get in the sin. Because we satisfy our flesh in ways that aren't of God. So you weren't meant for sin. You weren't made for that. And that sin is going to come against you. That sin is going to destroy you.
I'm probably going to take a break right now. Um, it's kind of dead. Well, yeah, it's, it's just kind of dead right now. And I want to keep preaching. And uh, I just hate what just happened with that cop. I, just, I mean, I try to respect the law and all that. If he knows the court cases, then why, then why say anything to me? You know, I mean, I'm not out here to start a fight. I'm out here to preach the gospel. Camera goes wild. Get a little water here. Throat's kind of dry. Too cold, which is such a blessing. from freedom of speech just because somebody doesn't like what I'm saying. That's Heckler's veto. If he knew anything about it, then why say anything? And then he's telling me certain words that are in the Bible I can't say. I mean, that's that's a restriction on my freedom of religion right there. I mean, if my Bible speaks about it, I mean, would they say anything if a Muslim comes out here and starts speaking about infidels? I don't know. If it's, in my, if it's in my religious holy book, I should be allowed to say it. I don't know. I just I put a bad taste in my mouth. You know, I spoke so so highly of them a while ago. I did the same thing. I did a I did a Facebook I did a Facebook post before I, before I came out here, and just said, you know, Greenville Police Department, they're so great. I guess it should have, it's supposed to happen eventually anyway. And I really don't want to get into any kind of big legal battles right now. I might I might call the police department when I get back. I want to give you an update. You know, um, the PNC Arena in Raleigh, you know how well that went, which it didn't go well at all. I called the police department in Raleigh and they never answered me. So I was thinking about calling them again and saying, hey, you know, I'm considering legal action here. Maybe I'll maybe get a, a rise out of them. God said, you're done. You're done with PNC Arena which is both good news and bad news for them. Somebody else to go out there and go through like a, like a lawsuit. Or what have you. I'm just gonna stay here for a minute. Sort of meditate. But yeah, that just I just no, no call for that. I mean, if he knows what the law says, if he knows about the court cases, then um, then why say anything to me? Hey. Yeah, I got a list. Don't be on this list. Don't be on the list. 
problem is that it keeps moving on me. I want to see that people can see it. I got more people coming through this way than that way. Okay. Yes, yeah, EC Street Preacher out here concerned about where you're going to spend eternity. So if you're not really concerned about that, yeah, just keep walking by. Ignore me like most people. But I'm concerned about where you spend eternity. If you're on this sign, if you're on this list, you're in trouble with God. You're in trouble with God. And the Bible is very clear what God will do to you if you die in your sin. Now, it'd be nice if you knew when you're going to die. We don't know that. And Hebrew says, it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. You are going to be judged for every word that you said, every deed that you have done. You're going to give an account. At the judgment seat of Christ, you will be there. You will make that appointment. Are you ready to be judged? If that puts fear in you, if that puts fear in you to know that you're going to be judged for everything that you've done and said, then you need to get right with God. It starts with repentance and living holy. You can't live holy when you're drinking alcohol. You can't live holy when you're smoking cigarettes. You can't live holy when you're sleeping around. Sex is for marriage. Man and woman for life. That's it. That's it. If you're having sex before marriage, if you're a man and you have sex with another man, if you're a woman and you have sex with another woman, or you're having sex with yourself watching pornography, then you are in sin. You do have appetites. There's a godly way to satisfy those appetites and there's man's way. Man's way is the way to destruction. It's broad. There's all kinds of ways that you can do it man's way and destroy yourself. And do that which is evil. I'm out here tonight concerned. I have concern for you. Concerned about your eternity. If you don't know Jesus, you're in trouble. If you're on this list, you're in trouble. All right. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. John 8, 11. That's it. That's it, yep. Some people say you can't stop sinning. You can't stop sinning. It's impossible. You might think it's impossible. But I got bad news for you. Jesus commanded people to stop sinning. The other side of the sign says, go and sin no more. That's what Jesus told the adulteress after he kept her from being stoned. A lot of people want to stop there. It didn't stop there. He said, go and sin no more. He didn't say go and sin a little. He didn't say go and sin. Go and sin some 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 of the small sins, but you know, big, don't do any of the big sins. He said, go and sin no more. If you need another example, we'll look no farther. In a few chapters before that. When Jesus heals a man who was paralyzed for 38 years. A 
Okay. The man was looking for healing from the pool, but he had the Son of God standing right beside him. So he goes to the Son of God and says, well, the Son of God heals him. So what did this loving man say to this man he healed later? Why do you want to think that Jesus was just all loving, non-judgmental? What did he say to this man later? Found him in the temple and said, stop sinning or something worse will happen to you. So Jesus commands us to not sin. He commands us to be perfect. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Is what you're wearing glorifying God? Are you doing work for the devil by what you wear? I'm just curious. How often do you go to God and ask for His will? How often do you go to God and say, what do you want me to do today, God? We don't do that. We're concerned with satisfying the lusts of our flesh. What about satisfying God? What about finding God's will? That's a good question to ask. Do you love God or do you hate God? Well, if you're living in sin, you hate God. Period. Sin is telling God, I don't need you. I want to satisfy myself. I want to bow to the altar of self and not to you. So you are satisfying yourself. Yes, I must talk about sin tonight. The sin that's waiting to destroy you. The sin that wants your destruction. Yes, the alcohol will give you a buzz. It'll give you a buzz. You could be the life of the party with that alcohol. But what happens months down the road when you need to put some bourbon in your coffee to keep from getting the shakes? It's not so much fun then, is it? And yet, that is sin's plan for you. the hall to smoking what is a godly reason to smoke what is a holy way to smoke I've never gotten an answer to that one What's your call, hmm? What's your call? just preaching the Bible preaching hey, the gospel preach, preach. all right thank you how are you glorifying God when you are puffing on those cigarettes how are you glorifying God when you smoke that marijuana, the wacky tobacco? How are you glorifying God? It's a sin. We are commanded by Jesus, red letters, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. How can you love God with all your mind when you're dazed and confused, when you're drunk, when you're high, how can you glorify God then? Plenty of places to get drunk around here. You're going to spend your hard earned money, and work is a gift from God. If you're a man, God commands you to work. So that's a gift from God. That's a benefit to you, but you're going to take that money that you earn through your sweat, through your work, and you're going to spend it on things that are going to kill you. 85,000 people every year. Some of them were just killed by someone who drank alcohol. They didn't drink alcohol themselves, 
but someone who drank alcohol ended up killing them. <coughs> Think about that. Think about that. Maybe they didn't want to do it. Maybe they didn't want to drink and drive. But they had been satisfying that lust for alcohol so many years, they couldn't help themselves. They had to drink. They had to drink. It's not that they wanted to, they had to. So they drink, and then they drive. And then someone dies. If you've ever seen a drunk driving accident, the drunk driver usually walks away. And it's someone else, sometimes a child that dies. I once saw a court case. Someone was on trial for killing a child in a drunk driving accident. And this woman was weeping because she had children. And because of her lust for alcohol, she ended up killing someone else's child. She was broken over that. How many other stories can I tell out here tonight? Of people who couldn't control their lusts and people died from it. Not just alcohol. What about cigarettes? Did you know now it's against the law to smoke in a car with children in it? It's against the law. Started January 30th of this year. You cannot smoke in a car with a child. How many people will be able to follow that law? Not many. If you're hooked on those cigarettes, you've got to smoke. You have to smoke. You have to smoke. <clears throat> so I here tonight to preach the gospel. If I can make one person stop and think about their sin for a moment. Sin that's trying to kill you. I've done my job. Another satisfied customer. You can get mad, you can walk away if you want to. But you know that what I'm saying is biblical. It's right here in this book. Don't be on this list. You are, you're in trouble with God. But you can repent. Getting drunk, smoking, sexual immorality. I'm a porn watcher. Porn watching makes you stupid. Why on earth would you do that? If you're watching porn, you're hooked on illegal drugs. It's proven, scientific fact. When you watch porn, there's the same chemical reaction in your brain as illegal drugs. So you are hooked on drugs if you're watching porn. Drugs are an enactment uh, of racism in the United States. Enactment of racism? Yeah. Drugs? Yeah, you should look into the war on drugs. It's an enactment of racism and class warfare. Well, I thought all, uh, you, you're talking about illegal drugs, right? No, absolutely not. Just drugs in general? Uh, drugs are kept illegal because of class warfare and racism. I know about the whole methadone thing. try to understand that and that, that, that is an enactment of class warfare by the US government and the wealthy individuals here to keep folks out of uh, money and reenact slavery in the US. So if you're comparing pornography to drugs, you're comparing people looking at porn to uh, slaves, which is an enactment of racism. So you can be a slave to pornography. What's that? There's a chemical reaction in the brain when you watch pornography. It's the same as illegal drugs. What do you consider Exactly the same. Hmm. What do you consider pornography, though? Pornography, watching uh, sexual immorality. What's immoral? Who are you to define morality? I got a clear moral standard from the Bible. I got a book that I can write anything I want now, too, but that doesn't mean Well, this is from God, though. What if you don't believe in God? If you don't believe in God? Of course you do. No, you I used don't. to. You used to believe in God. Absolutely not. There is no God. Why How can you say there's no God? God? 
Design. Design. Look around you. You think all this was just a chance? Just an accident? An accident. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Well, think about what I said. fixing the camera here so the war on drugs is class warfare I'm gonna bring this down I'm really trying to get this camera straight I'm sorry if this is coming out really strange. so the war on drugs is class warfare okay well then he said he didn't really say about illegal he said war on drugs I might look into it. You know, I might have a, a free minute here and there uh, sometime next month. I don't know. I keep myself pretty busy. I, know, I might look into it. But yeah, you start talking about porn and oh my goodness. So I think we can all agree here that pornography is bad. Pornography is bad for you. Porn stars don't live very long. They rarely make it to 40 years old. They get involved with drugs. They get STDs. So why would you support that? That is ending up killing people. Leading people to an early grave. You're supporting it. You get all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems. Scientific fact, watching pornography makes you stupid. So why do it? You may want to get an education. It's going to be hard to do. You keep watching that porn. <clears throat> it's getting me nervous now. I don't know if they're they're like around me to to um, as protection. Or they're just waiting for me to slip up so they can slap cuffs on me. I don't want to get, I want to get arrested right now. I want to go to New Orleans next next <laughs> next time. But I haven't said what they told me to say, and I've toned it down. So as far as I've done so far, I'm I'm following their their commands. Like I say, I just want I don't want to get into it right now. Well, somebody's talking to that cop over there. Maybe that's why he's hanging around. Any questions or rebuttals so far? I'm glad we're all in agreement that sin is wrong, that you need to repent, and that God is the true way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Yes, Jesus was judgmental, and one day he'll judge you. A loving Savior will one day be a harsh judge. He's going to take a look everything you did, everything you said. You're going to have to give an account for it. So get ready for judgment. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, of course, being the only way. Allah is the devil. Muslims are misled. It's our job as Christians to lead Muslims to the true God, God of the Quran, is no God at all. Maybe God with a little G. But Islam is of the devil. I love Muslims. I've had good react. I've had good conversations with Muslims. But I hate Islam. I do have an interest in speaking against Islam. Because Islam teaches that because of my faith, I should have my head cut off. Maybe if they're really loving, they'll use a nice sharp blade, just one whack. Read it for yourself. Surah 9. 
last surah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad speaks against the fight against those who don't believe. To kill the infidels wherever you can find them. I say, oh, well, that's a mistranslation. Seems pretty clear to me. <clears throat> You're taking that verse out of context. Well, what other context am I supposed to take it? When it talks about kill them wherever you find them. What, what, am, I, what am I missing there? Kill them wherever you find them? What am I missing? So, of course, Islam is leading people to hell. That's why I speak against it. And then you've got the Hindu religion. Over three million gods. Holy cow! How do you keep up with over three million gods? Is there an app for that? Uh, and of course, the whole idea of polytheism itself is self-refuting. Because if you have one god that says one thing and another god that says a different thing, then you've got to have a standard above that to settle that kind of dispute. So polytheism just by itself is self-refuting. So these followers of Norse gods and followers of different pagan gods, they're all wrong. There's only one God that took on human flesh and took your penalty of sin to save you. There's only one God that did that. His name is Jesus Christ. That's as, as simple as it gets right there. No God has ever loved you more than Jesus Christ. Allah never took on human flesh and died for your sin. Neither did any of the over three million Hindu gods. But that's not the end of the story. That's good news that Jesus died for our sin. But that's not the end of the story. What about all these false gods, false doctrines? You can visit the grave of Muhammad today in Mecca. Of course, if they know about me, they probably cut my head after I got after I was there for about five minutes. But you can go to Mecca and visit the grave of Muhammad. You can go out west to visit the grave of Joseph Smith. It's probably a grave for Charles Taz Russell. There are pieces of Buddha all over Asia. But there is one guy who rose from the dead. You can see his tomb in Jerusalem, but it's empty. It's empty. After three days, he arose. That's the God you are to want to have. God not only died for you, but raised from the dead. So we all can enjoy salvation today and be free from the sin that's trying to kill you. You can be free. That's what grace is all about. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the ability to not sin. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. This book right here is God's love letter to you. If you got a letter from President Trump, you might be tempted to read it. I don't know. If you got a letter from the Secretary of the UN, you might be tempted to read it. But there is a letter to you from the Creator of the universe. He wrote it with you in mind. But you let it sit on the shelf, collect dust, while you watch Walking Dead. How wicked is that? Somebody writes you a letter, you ought to read it. And this is his love letter to you. So 
to read his love letter to you. Find out what it says. And repent of your sin. The sin that's trying to kill you. The sin whose job is to destroy you. So don't be on this list. If you are, you're in big trouble with God. Psalm 7 says, God is angry with the wicked every day. So if you're on this list, God is angry with you. Jesus Himself said, Fear not the one who can kill the body and can do nothing else to you. I'll tell you who you should fear. Fear the one that can kill the body and then send your soul to hell. Him you should fear. We are commanded to fear God and nothing else. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering why I started doing the camera kind of stationary and not uh, not just holding it like this. But like I say, this is good practice. This is good practice for uh, what we're going to be doing next week. <clears throat> Is what you're wearing glorifying God? When you looked in your closet tonight, before you came out here, and you stood in that mirror, did you say, God, what would you like for me to wear tonight? Did you even ask God, where do you want me to go tonight? Or if you're coming out here to get drunk, I guarantee you, you're not doing what God wants you to do. I guarantee you that. God wants you to go to heaven, not to hell. Paul said, in Athens, Greece, God is commanding all men everywhere to repent. That's New Testament. Early church. So what has changed? What has changed? Nothing. Repentance. Repentance is the key. It's not just asking forgiveness. It's changing your mind about sin. You get to where you don't want to sin. You don't want to drink. You don't want to smoke. You don't want to sleep around. You don't want to do those things. Have you changed your mind about sin? The pleasure is short-lived. How many people drink in the morning just to keep get, from getting the shakes? How many people chain smoke and feel like they can't stop? Didn't start that way. didn't start that way how many people started drinking in the morning not very many if any started with that one drink that one buzz and then it just grew from there because the buzz stopped happening so you had to drink more you got to keep drinking more and more to get that buzz the satisfied I need to get drunk. And then you're a slave to it. And then it destroys you. 85,000 every year. 85,000 every year because of alcohol. Is that acceptable? Or do we need to do something about it? Is it acceptable to have 85,000 people die every year because of alcohol? Or do we need to do something about it? You can do something about it tonight and give it up. I'm so glad I gave up alcohol. I was an alcoholic myself. Now I've been free for three years. 
Yeah, just walk on by. Say something and walk on by quickly, coward. Cowards end up in the lake of fire. Read Revelation. It's fearful. It's fearful to try to refute a man of God. It's a fearful thing. Because you know he's right. You know he's right. And that your sin is wrong. So it's a fearful thing to try to stand up for your sin against a man of God who knows his Bible. I can stand out here all night and maybe have a few people actually try to defend their sin. They might try to do it, but they can't win because they know I'm right. And they go on their, they go on the internet and try to find out their little facts, try to refute what I'm saying. Doesn't work, people. Doesn't work. The Bible's been true, has always been true, will always be true. We keep finding more and more evidence every year that proves that the Bible is true. You can't walk away from it. So all we have today, people to hide their heads in the sand. Oh no! Let me get away from this street preacher. He's talking truth. I don't want to hear the truth. I want to stay in my sin. So all I got is little snide comments from cowards walking by. That's all I get. And of course, the cowardly will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will be outside heaven. What we need is more fear of God. Hey, that man right there be sitting a lot. <laughs> sitting a lot? He, him right there. That's why he's avoiding me. All right, tell him, tell him to stop it. Stop it! It's going to kill him. Yeah, if you're sinning, stop it. Stop it before it kills you. I don't want anybody out here to die and go to hell. That's why I stand out here. That's why I stand out here preaching Bible. Preaching the truth. I don't want anyone out here to die. I don't want the drunkards to die and go to hell. I don't want the smokers to die and go to hell. I don't want people sleeping around to die and go to hell. People dressing in their club outfits, twerking it on the dance floor. I don't want them to die and go to hell. I don't want that to happen. So I preach Bible. I preach the way out. Don't believe that lie that you have to sin. Of course you don't. Can the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, can He keep you from sinning? Of course He can. Ask for His help. Ask for His help. He can stop you from drinking. He can stop you from smoking. He can stop you from your homosexuality. He can stop you from that. But how often do we ignore, ignore the warnings? Nowadays, we've got warning labels on the cigarettes about what this smoking can do to you. We need warning labels on sin. What sin can do to you. We already have one in the, in the Bible. What person in the Bible sinned and kept sinning and it ended out pretty good for him? Somebody name me one person. 
who sinned in the Bible and kept sinning, and it turned out good for him. Nobody. Nobody. So the issue's already been settled. You can't sin and keep on sinning and expect to go to heaven. Many on that day will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in Your name? Didn't we do signs and wonders in Your name? He says, depart from me. I never knew you. Because they couldn't get the sin out. You may do a few things for God, but you must live holy. You must live holy. Some people think they can do a 15-minute devotional and then watch a walking dead marathon and think they're right with God. Nonsense. Nonsense. You think you can go to church on Sunday and live like the devil all week and think you're right with God? Nonsense. Some of you don't even go to church. Of course, there's not a lot of good churches out there today. Most of them are Victoria's Secret fashion shows. <clears throat> Oh, we can't speak against that. We might run people away. False teachers. It's going to be bad for them on Judgment Day. And God says, I sent people to you and you taught them false doctrine. You told them that it was okay to sin. That grace covered them. Nonsense. When you sin, you put yourself under the law, not grace. Grace is there to keep you from sinning. It's just not hard to find sin nowadays. Too easy to find sin. Too many places where murder of children is legal uh, too many did you know there's a restaurant in Japan that serves human meat you can go to a restaurant in Japan in Tokyo and buy human meat and eat it tell me this world isn't sinful that's crazy but that's what we got to deal with nowadays time of increased wickedness and that wickedness wants to swallow you up and send you to hell but Jesus has come that you can have life and have it more abundantly you know why you think your life stinks you know why so many people take antidepressants because they don't have the life they don't have Jesus that's why they're depressed. That's why they come out here to satisfy their flesh with alcohol, with nicotine, with promiscuity. They're looking to fill that hole that only God can fill. They don't have the life. That's the only life there is. Let me ask you tonight, have you ever experienced joy? I'm not talking about happiness. Happiness depends upon circumstances. But there is joy that you can have that comes from Jesus Christ. Have you ever experienced that joy? Well, you wouldn't be in sin if you did. You'd want to get rid of sin. You would say, I want to get this sin out of my life. I want to keep having this joy. But that joy is available to you through repentance and living holy. What do you miss out on by living holy? What are you not going to have when you live holy? The things that are trying to kill you. The alcohol, the nicotine, the drugs, the sleeping around. That's what you're going to lose when you live holy, you're not going to die an early death. 
through sin. Just think about your eternity. Too many people are focused on the here and now. What's in front of me? What am I going to do today? What am I going to do tonight? What am I going to do tomorrow? Take one moment and think about your eternity. That's a long time. It's a long time. What are you doing about your eternity? A sin's the wrong way to go. Sin's the wrong way. Your eternity is determined by your life here on earth and where you stand with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> question that Pilate asked 2,000 years ago that you have to ask yourself what shall I do with Jesus that's what Pilate asked the crowd what shall I do with Jesus and that's a question that everyone has to answer what shall you do with Jesus there's only one answer to that you have to accept him recognize his deity let him save you and cleanse you. What shall you do with Jesus? The Muslims say Jesus was just a prophet. That he didn't die on the cross. That's the wrong answer. Wrong answer. They don't believe he was the Son of God. Wrong answer. What shall you do with Jesus? You need to accept Him. He took that crown of thorns for you. He was scourged on His back to where His skin hung down to His knees like ribbons. He was crucified. The worst punishment there was for you. And how do you repay Him? By getting drunk, by smoking, by sleeping around, by wearing immodest dress. That's how you repay Him. And that's why you deserve hell. You should thank God. You should thank God that I'm here tonight. You should thank God. That means that God has not given up on you. And that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now praying for you. He's praying for you. He's saying, Father, give him another chance. Give her another chance. Send someone to speak truth to them. Send someone to speak the Bible to them. Send someone to tell them about their sin. So God has not given up on you yet. He sent me out here. He knew you would be here. And He's telling you tonight, come to me and repent. I will save you. I will cleanse you. I will give your life purpose. That's why you're so depressed. You're not following God's will for your life. Live holy. And God will give you purpose. If living without God, if living for the devil is so great, then why are so many people prescribed with antidepressants? Why are so many people depressed? It's very simple. They're not living for God. Live for God and you'll have joy. Repent and live in grace so that you won't sin. And live holy. Your life will have purpose. And you won't be depressed. Depression is nothing but the product 
of trying to satisfy your lusts with worldly things. You're trying to satisfy the lusts of your flesh. Depression is what you reap from that. If you, if you sow to your flesh, if you live selfish, what are you going to reap? You reap what you sow. So if you're only looking out for yourself, numero uno, what are you going to reap from that? And what about if you live for God? If you live for Jesus, what are you going to reap from that? Any farmer can tell you about sowing and reaping. You plant that seed, you water it, you take care of it, and then you get a harvest. You plant bad seed, you'll get a bad harvest. You plant good seed, you get a good harvest. that's what I'm asking tonight what have you sowed into your life so good things you reap good things so bad things you reap bad things how you doing tonight boss hey All right. yeah. there you go. if you know Jesus you know peace so many people don't have peace So many people are so overwhelmed by bad news. They're so overwhelmed by conflicts in their life. But there is a peace that passes all understanding. And it comes through repentance. It comes through knowing Jesus. He is the only one that has promised peace. That He will give it. Laugh and mock all you want. But what is the alternative? Who else can offer you a peace that passes all understanding? Who else can get rid of that depression? You think drugs are going to do it? Nonsense. Someone just told me that the war on drugs is, is class warfare. I'm not sure about that. Obviously, he didn't believe that drugs was the answer. And drugs is never the answer. Because there's a healer out here today. His name is Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, battery's winding down, so I got to change the battery. Uh, I'll take a little break right here. Yeah, I feel like I'm just getting started. this out okay back after a small break in my in decaf mode because I'd rather not sit in jail instead of going to New Orleans so uh, a little more activity not really seeing a lot of foot traffic but um got some people coming by every now and then so uh doing what I came here to do. What is the answer to sin? We all can agree sin is wrong. Sin is wrong. What is the appropriate answer to sin? Do we need to do as some do? They spend some time, I'll spend some time sowing my wild oats having having some experiences and then later on settle down make my peace with God nonsense the Bible says can you lap hot coals into your lap and not get burned and that's what you're trying to do with sin because you think your sin is worth it. <clears throat> I got an interesting read for you. Before you come out here, smoke and drink, 
twerking on the dance floor. Why don't you read Proverbs? Proverbs. Proverbs has strong warnings against alcohol. How late are you going to be here? Uh, a little bit longer. I got another battery. Uh, strong warnings against alcohol. Talks about destroying your liver. This was written centuries ago, over two millennia ago, and it talks about alcohol destroying your liver. Nowadays, we know about cirrhosis. That's very interesting. I find that interesting. And then to the young men out here, talks about the way of the adulteress. Now she is brazen. And that her way leads to death. Talks about an adulteress leading a young man away like a sheep to the slaughter. Save yourself from the adulteress. Uh, you'll lose your life and then you'll lose your soul. And she will care nothing about you. Throw you away. Uh, same thing with the men out here. They just want to see how many notches they can get in their belt. Because they're trying to feed that lust. And lust is never satisfied. Lust is never satisfied. You start sleeping with women. You want to have two at a time. You want to have three at a time. Then you're going to want to start one men. It's never satisfied. Never satisfied. And women that are trying to entice men through lust, you might get them to marry you. But lust is never satisfied. He's going to want to keep. He's going to keep wanting something more. But the married life just isn't satisfying him. Today we're rampant with adultery. Homosexuality, lesbianism, bisexuality. They can't even keep up with all of them. Some people are even confused about their gender. They're biology deniers. But if you look to this book, if you follow this book, you'll never be confused. You'll never be depressed. Trials and tribulations will come. Jesus was very specific about that. Trials and tribulations will come if you follow this book. But you have someone to lean on. You have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The book is waiting for you. The book has a message for you and for you only, a personal message. You want to know what that message is? Get into the book. Get into the book. Find out what God has in store for you. Are you really happy with the life you're leading right now? Is it really all rosy? Are you living in a paradise right now? Maybe you are. If you are, hey, God bless you. But I know there's people out there, they're hurting and they're depressed. And I'm saying the Bible has the answer. The Bible has the answer to your depression, to your confusion. You feel like you're going from conflict to conflict, barely surviving, barely hanging on. And I'm telling you, this book is the answer to that. You can end your depression. And you can have peace that passes all understanding. If you're willing to give up your sin and follow the book. The sin that's trying to kill you.
When you entertain your sin, when you engage in your sin, you're embracing your murderer with open arms. That alcohol would love to give you cirrhosis. Those cigarettes would love to give you lung cancer. That person, that person that wants to sleep with you would love to give you an STD. You can Google it. Find out how many homosexuals continue to be active after they found out they had HIV. Find out how many. Hundreds. Hundreds. They found out they had HIV and continued to be sexually active. Some people can't even fathom that. How could you do that? How could you continue to have sex with people when you have HIV? I know the answer to that. Because they were filled with lust. They couldn't help themselves. They had given themselves completely over to lust. They had to satisfy it. They had to satisfy it. They were a slave to it. But Jesus Christ came for freedom. So you got to be careful nowadays. You can't have it both ways. If you want to find somebody who's sexually promiscuous so you can have sex with them, those same people who are sexually promiscuous who go around with immodest clothing, they may have an STD. Yep, this is just this is just showing me why I stopped doing this. Why I started using the hand truck. But like I say, it serves a purpose. It serves a purpose. Don't be on the list, people. Don't be on the list. You are in you're in big trouble with God and God is angry with you. But he's ready to save you. It's not too late yet. You're still breathing. Your heart's still beating. So it's not too late. I hope that everyone I'm talking to tonight lives a long life. And I want them to have a chance to repent and to not go to hell. But I don't know that. We don't know. You only find tomorrow on a fool's calendar. Because you're not promised tomorrow. What you are promised is an appointment in front of the judgment seat of Christ. Where He will judge every word you spoke, every action that you've done. And don't make the mistake of thinking that God's silence is approval. He's lining them up. He's lining them up. He's going to line up your sin and push them at you. At the judgment. We need to change our thinking. When we wake up, what's the first thing we think of when we wake up? What am I going to do today? How am I going to make myself happy today? What about what makes God happy? Why don't you think about that when you first wake up? Ask God, what can I do to make you happy today? Don't you want to spend eternity with Him instead of burning in hell? You might try to get to know the person. The person of Jesus Christ. Sounds a lot better than burning. Sounds a lot better than a lake of fire.
just that one simple question, that one simple question could change your life forever. Just ask God what He wants from you. That's not a hard question to ask. It's an eternal question. It's going to determine your eternity. Ask God what He wants from you. Yes, you may have to give up sin. But that's the thing that's trying to kill you. Give up the thing that's trying to kill you. Have abundant life. And then when you die, go to heaven. That sounds like a good deal to me. That sounds like such a good deal. Or you can live in sin, be depressed, be destroyed, have your life destroyed, and then when you die, go to hell. Which sounds like the better deal? I like the first one myself. That's the one I chose. Would it really be that bad to give up your sin? Think about that. Think about that for a minute. Is it really bad to give up the alcohol, give up the smoking? Give up the sex outside of marriage? Give up the homosexuality? <clears throat> Is it really bad to give that up? Think about it really. What has sin gotten you? What have you reaped from your sin? When you sowed that sin, what have you reaped from it? Are you living an abundant life because of your sin? So bad things, you reap bad things. But if you sow good things, you reap good things. What about that question? Asking God what He wants. We're so focused on ourselves. We bow at the altar of self. And we want to satisfy our, the lusts of our flesh. But what about what God wants? What about what God wants from us? We never think about that. think they want to be taken away. Taken away, you end up in hell. Wouldn't it be nice at your death to be ushered into heaven? Wouldn't that be a nice thing? All you got to do is give up your sin. The thing that's trying to kill you I mean, really, to, to reject Jesus is utter stupidity. It's really utter stupidity. It is such a good deal. But we love our sins so much. We love that alcohol so much. We love those cigarettes so much. We love the drugs so much. We love the sex outside of marriage so much. We can't take that deal. We want to please ourselves. We forget all about God. And yet, He is the one that's going to judge you. Not going to judge yourself. And you will stand before Him alone. So your little partners in crime won't be there to help you. You can't get some slick lawyer to help you. When you face Jesus on His throne. <clears throat> How will you answer for what you've done in this life? What you said? You have to give an account. I go with them more. Keep them safe and give them wisdom. 
Heavenly Father, I pray that you send the Holy Spirit to the site that they're responding to. In Jesus' name. Ambulance. Ambulance just came by. Are they going to make it in time? Are they going to be able to stop someone's death? Are they going to be able to save that person? Are they going to be too late? And that person is going to stand in front of a holy God in a matter of minutes. Don't know. We don't know. If the person's not right with Jesus, I hope they make it. I can't stand the thought of people. I can't stand the thought of people going to hell. I can't stand that thought. Why do you think I come out here? So let's stop sinning. God's got a plan for your life, and it's not getting drunk, smoking, sleeping around. It's none of that. It's abundant life. Nobody living in sin thinks they're living a great life. They're always looking to the future. They say, well, if I get this, then I'll be happy. If I get this, I'll be... They're always looking to the future. If I had this, I'll be happy. If I was famous, I'd be happy. If I was famous... Famous people are some of the most depressed people you ever meet. Uh, looks like they're having fun now, doesn't it? They're in that car and they're they're playing the loud music and they're they're laughing and everything. What happens when they get home? Nobody else is there. What happens in those moments that they're alone and the depression comes? The friends aren't there. How will they deal with that? They'll try to deal with that with drugs and alcohol. Or maybe they'll try to shack up with someone that night. Poor, poor, poor choices. Poor choices. When you can have abundant life through Jesus Christ. What has sin ever gotten you? If you've been sinning your whole life, how's your life now? Or do you think that continue to live in sin You'll have some kind of happy life in the future. What about right now? What about in the present? Doesn't matter, does it? Okay. Um, kind of getting close to that time where uh, I might run into a few people who might want to talk this is usually about that time this is usually that golden time somebody that finally decides to speak now, i have had a, a few interactions in so we'll see what happens your sin's job is to lead you into hell and you are embracing it with open arms it's the first thought on your mind when you wake up in the morning how am i going to satisfy myself today and it's all wicked. <clears throat> when you sin, you are a hating God. You can either be a sin-loving God-hater or a sin-hating God-lover. No gray area. None. 
either serving God or serving the devil. If you wake up this morning and say, God, how can I serve you today? What would you like me to do today? Or did you wake up thinking, how am I going to satisfy myself today? That's going to tell you where you're at. That's going to tell you where you're at. You're going to reap. You're going to reap what you sow. So to your flesh, you'll reap destruction. So to your spirit, your spirit which is grieved by all the sin that you do, you'll reap life. And life more abundantly. It doesn't have to be the way you're living. You can change it all. You can change it all tonight. Jesus can change your life in an instant. And He can take away the alcoholism. He can take away the drug addiction, the porno addiction. He can take it all away. Don't be on the list. You'll wreak destruction. I really look behind me that much. Nobody there. I usually get a crowd behind me. So if you do see one of these videos, you usually think there's nobody around. But yeah, nobody, nobody behind me tonight. Where has sin gotten you? Right there? Of course. Of course. You're on your way to destruction. If you keep reaping your sin, will you reap good things or bad things from your sin? Yeah, she said there's sin a letter right there. And you got to admit, most people out here right now are probably not very godly people. I mean, all these places around here that are open, you got tattoo parlors and bars, they're out here for the wrong reason. You know. They're out here to get drunk. Get drunk and party. And forget about tomorrow. When you're doing the dry heaves. I've been there. In my day, I could drink you under the table. Drink to where I lost time. Projectile vomiting. Had all that going on. Now I get drunk with the new wine of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not drink wine in excess, but be ye filled by the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit is better than any drug on this earth because He is the creator of the universe. He is God. And in His presence is fullness of joy. And at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. That's what God's offering you. But you say, no, i got to live in my sin. I've got to drink my alcohol. i got to smoke. i got to have sex outside of marriage as if that gotten you anywhere where's that gotten you you're almost destroyed because of it some of you are out here not because you want to be out here but you need to be out here because you're hooked you're an addict you're an alcoholic you're a sexual addict that's why you're out here there's nothing you want there's something you need because you're a slave to it but Jesus Christ can set you free He 
can turn an alcoholic into a sober person. He can turn a drug addict. Normal. And he can turn a sexually immoral person into a moral person. A person who lives holy. We heap praise on these people who live holy lives, that live good lives. We praise them. But at the same time, we say, there's no way we could be like that. We, could, we can't do that. It's only because of your love for your sin. But you can live like that through repentance. Letting Jesus cleanse you. He's got a plan for your life. He has a destiny for you to walk into. And I fear that some people are passing their destiny by. There's a great destiny for you. God has big plans for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope in a future. And yet, you continue to live in sin. And one day, your destiny is going to pass you by. Time to live for Jesus before it's too late. Is your sin that important? Is your sin that important that you're going to give up your destiny, your God-given destiny, to follow after your sin? Is it that important? It better be. It's going to cost you your eternity. That's where you're going to live, in eternity. You see street preacher out here tonight that preached the gospel, tell you that your sin trying to kill you but there's a man Jesus Christ who can save you and cleanse you and all you have to do is give up your sin and live holy living holy you'll live longer and don't think it's burdensome Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden's light. It's harder to take on that burden of sin than to take on the burden of Jesus. His yoke is easy, his burden's light. Why would you turn that away? It's harder to sin and live under that burden than to live for Jesus. It's hard to sin. That's tough. That's a hard life. Filled with depression. Filled with destruction. Medical issues. But if you live for Jesus, you'll have life abundantly. Mock all you want. They did in Moses' day. Then the flood came. And it was too late. And I fear that some people I'm talking to tonight, one day it's going to be too late. It's time to accept Jesus. But you're not going to be able to do that. It's going to be hard to live for Jesus out here in this area all the bars, all the alcohol, all the immodest dress, clubs. It's hard. It's hard to live for Jesus out here. Yet that's the only thing that's going to save you. What has sin gotten you? Sin promises pleasure. The wages are too, are too steep.
wages of sin is death. Not, not just physical death. But eternity in hell. When a worm dieth not, the fire's never quenched. Don't be on the list. Don't be on the list. You need to. You need to praise the Lord. Not walking around dressed like that. How many of you tonight, when you picked out your outfit, did you ask for God's approval? You say, God, what what do you want me to wear tonight? What can I wear tonight that will glorify you? No, you just dress for yourself. You bowed at the altar of self. That's what you did. So if you continually sow selfish acts, what are you going to reap? The Bible says, just not judge another. What does it say after that? It says, you hypocrites. Hypocrite. Jesus was talking about hypocrites. You call me and stop judging me. How can you be so judgmental? Calling me a hypocrite. You're the hypocrite. You told me not to judge, and then you judge me. Jesus was talking to hypocrites. You can't judge if you're a hypocrite. Well, you have cones around you. Why don't I have cones? Uh, for protection. From what? From people. What, people can't cross the cones? Sometimes it works. It doesn't work all the time, but sometimes it works. Some people say, oh, I'd get you right now if these cones weren't here. There's nothing to protect you. You need to go down there. Oh, no, I got plenty of protection. No, really. I got like, angels watching over this me. This is fine. You know, you know, down there, the people that filter in into 519, those are the people who need your help, man. Nothing's happening. Well, I got some people coming by. But, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's, uh, crowded down there. And, you know, it's not really good. That's where the people. As a public speaker, man, um, you need to, if you're going to reach, you need to consider your audience. And there's no, people are just driving by you. I want you to reach people. Because uh, I'm in tune with your message. I'm listening to you. Oh, thank you. I, I, I feel what you're saying, and I wish I had the comments to say what you're saying. Oh, it's easy. It's easy. But Daniel on the Lions Day, you hear me? Yeah. You need to go down there. That's where all the people are. Nobody's hearing you right now. I'm like I say, I got some people following me, but I mean it is just so packed down there. Yeah. You know, well, there's not really a good spot to stop and you know, going for it. have a preach. Well, I mean I want to reach people. No, you're not reaching anybody here. Well of course I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. You're like you're not talking to anybody here. You're just like talking to people like coming out of this parking lot. And these people are just going to restaurants and stuff. They're not even like the big sinners. I don't know. They're, 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 they're going to bars and stuff. Let me, let me tell you. This is my first time out here. I mean, sometimes I do. I'll like do a, like a walk through there every now and then. One time they were having like a tug of party down there. So I, I was like preaching through that. This is not but, I mean, these, spot, these, This is like the mom and pop. Right this uh, is not the... I mean, I'll take that into consideration, you know. Um, but, I mean, it is just so packed down there. Yeah. And there's no there's no way. If I set up this down there, there's, there's not a cop that's going to let me stay there. He's going to say, look, you're blocking the side. You know, if the cops, God's going to be with you. He's going to, well, yeah. God's not going to let it. I think it's him. God takes me places where I think I should never go. And he uh -huh. takes you there, and he delivers you safely, and he brings you back. No cop mm -hmm. is going to put you in jail for doing what you're doing right now. As long as you're respectful, and you let God speak through you. Uh-huh. You're going to don't let people They've already talked to me more. No, whenever you, whenever you guys are aggressive towards people, 
do not cause yeah. a problem. But you know, when you take the lumps and just come back with love, when people when people respond to that, then it's all on them. Uh huh. You hear me? Well, then, yeah, this is a night of love. Listen, I blend in. When I blend in, I chameleon with people. But they don't know I'm with Christ. Uh huh. Like they they can feel me. But whenever you come at them from an aggressive standpoint, they want to fight you. They want to be like, this guy's a hypocrite. Okay, that was calling you right now. Right? Yeah. And you can tell them you call them all day long. But like when you come out of them at a, at a, at a like a like a an offense defense standpoint, they are they're gonna go defense every time. But whenever you're there with them, you're on the bench. I'll definitely take that into consideration. Appreciate it. EC Street Preacher, you can check me out on uh, YouTube. I will, man. All right. Um, let's see. Got a little bit of time. We can park the clock. Might take a break here. Okay, um, that interaction was interesting, but, uh, take that with a grain of salt. Um, I'm talking about me going down there, where it is extremely crowded, the, uh, the sidewalks are narrow, and you're not going to generate, nobody's going to want to talk to you if, um, they only have like a, like a five inch space to stand and talk to you and not be out in the street so i mean and then of course you're saying you, you can't be aggressive you know i mean you know everybody in the bible was aggressive i mean when jesus cleared the temple you know he, some people don't wouldn't see that as love I mean, it's actually sealed for the for the temple um, but I mean, overturning tables and making a whip of cords and whipping at people, that's not, oh, I get, that's my back with That's not, that's not seen as loving. But, when I was called to preach, I didn't know how to preach. Oh God, I got it wrong. But you see, God wants people that don't believe they can preach to preach because what are they going to do? They're going to depend on Him. They're going to say, God, I need your help to preach. That's the way it happened with me. So I look in the Bible and I see the way they preached. <clears throat> you know, if, if pe people around in John the Baptist day weren't saying, you know, that they're probably telling him you need to be more loving you know you're out there you're saying you need to repent you're calling people snakes you know uh you know you need to tone that down be a little more loving have more people approach you but of course john the baptist ministry thousands came to him into the wilderness to hear him preach thousands came to him and he didn't have a very long ministry, but even in the book of Acts, you're seeing people that were, that had John's baptism. So, that's all I got to say about that, is I'm gonna do it the Bible way. And, uh, I mean, there are more people down there. I'm not doubting that, there are more bars down there, but it's a very big parking lot behind me. I don't know if I've ever showed it on camera. That's a very big parking lot, and there are other parking lots around here. I'll, I'll admit that. I mean, I got a park near here myself. That's not behind me. Um, but 
it was just it's so narrow down there that there's no way I can sit up down there and for the cop to say, okay, you can do what you're doing. I mean, just no way. And there is a, a good amount of foot traffic coming through here. And I mean, what about what about the bars down this street right here? If I'm down there, I'm gonna miss all the people going to the bars up here. It's just yeah. I mean it's good to scout out good locations. I believe in having good locations when you're preaching, but <sighs> Okay, break over. You see street preacher out here tonight? Preaching the gospel, preaching Bible. Tell you that your sin is trying to destroy you. What has your sin gotten you? You live in your sin. You wake up thinking about sin. What has it gotten you? Depression? Destruction? What has your sin gotten you? I know the answer to sin. You don't have to sin. <clears throat> Give up what's destroying you for abundant life. It's all in the book. The book that you neglect. God's love letter to you. If the president, the secretary general of the UN sent you a letter, you'd be tempted to read it. Well, the creator of the universe wrote you a letter. And it's got a specific message for you. Speaking of the president, I just love President Donald Trump. I just love that man. I'm glad we got a president like him. He has proclaimed Jerusalem the capital of Israel, which so many godly presidents before him said they were going to do and never did. But he had the guts to proclaim Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and has put in the American embassy there. <laughs> and he just had a tax plan passed. Wages are going up. And of course, he's against pro-martyr, murdering babies in the womb. He's, of course, judges that are against abortion, against murder. And he has cut funding to child murder. Bravo to him. We can have a discussion over whether he is saved or not. And I gotta admit, the evidence is kind of lacking. But isn't it funny how a person that we're not sure if he's saved has done so much for Christians and so much for the Jews. And he's certainly better than Barack Obama, which will go down as the worst president in history. The worst. What happens when this abomination of same-sex marriage comes out? He lights up the White House. Even the Hebrew Israelites have, have taken him off of their list. The Hebrew Israelites don't even like them for doing that. <clears throat> Put us trillions of dollars in debt. Wouldn't stand against child murder. You won't be hell, Satan, and in hell. 
You'll be saying, why did I listen to the street preacher? It's easy, easy to yell something and run off like a coward. And cowards will find their place in a lake of fire. You can read that in Revelation. If you can read, you bother to have a Bible, why don't you take your own advice? <clears throat> Yeah, ignore the street preacher. Ignore the street preacher. He's just concerned about what you're, where you're going to spend eternity. Concerned about your soul. That's all. Doesn't want you to die in your sin and go to hell. That's all. That's all. Nothing, nothing important about that. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Live in your sin. Die an early death. Spend eternity in the lake of fire. Hey, another satisfied customer. Praise you won't be praising him in hell. You won't be praising him in hell. You can mock and scoff all you want. They did the same thing in Noah's day, and they drowned. And they drowned. Said so Noah, you're crazy. They say the same thing to me. You're crazy. And then the flood came. In this case, there's not going to be a flood. You're going to die and meet a holy God. You're in modest dress. You're alcohol. You're smoking. You wish you hadn't have done it then. Well, uh, maybe smoking will get you used to uh, what's going to be happening to you in hell when you're burning forever. So that might be a good idea. You know, if you're planning on going to hell, go in and smoke. Get used to it. Of course, it'll be your flesh burning, not a, not a tobacco. Why would you praise someone who wants to kill you? I don't understand that. Why would you serve somebody who wants to kill you? Would you pay for a hitman to kill you? I want Jesus. You want Jesus? Just ask him. Hey, I love Jesus. All right. We love Jesus. Then why are you sinning? <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus says. If you're going around dressing immodestly, drinking alcohol, twerking it on the in the club, you're not loving Jesus. That's not the way to love Jesus. Keep his commandments. You won't be you won't be saying that in hell. Uh, everybody wants to praise Satan. Praise Satan. He wants to kill you. He wants to kill you. Hell was made for Satan and his angels, not for you. But he wants company. He wants company. So he wants you to die in your sin. Be with him in hell. Well, if you are a good enough sinner, maybe you'll have a spot next to him in the lake of fire. Why don't you take your own advice? <clears throat> Speaking truth. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ. Because you are going to stand before Him one day in judgment. In judgment. People tell me not to judge. It's better to have me judge you than Jesus. Wait till you meet Jesus. You think my judgment is harsh. Wait till you meet Jesus. A loving Savior will one day be a harsh judge. He's going to judge everything you've done and everything you've said. Read the book. 
keep an eye on the time here. Make sure I got power. I got a long walk to get back to my car. Okay, I'm gonna stay out here a little bit longer. This is getting interesting. Oh. I do need to be cognizant of the time though, because I do have a uh, rather long journey starting tomorrow. That's right. I should probably be resting for my long trip tomorrow. But I am concerned about the souls out here. The souls. I don't want people to go to hell. And yet people are driving by saying, Hell Satan. Satan doesn't care about you. Satan wants to snuff you out. And it's only the mercy of God that keeps you alive. If Satan had his way, you'd be dead right now. Maybe you've got a mother or a grandmother praying for you. Maybe that's what's kept you alive. Make no mistake. If God's mercy wasn't on you, you'd be dead right now. Satan will not hesitate to kill you if he has a chance. Look at the book of Job. Everything that Satan could do to Job, that God allowed, he, he did it. He did it. What has your sin gotten you? Think about that. People in sin look to the future. Say, when I get this, I'll be happy. When I've done this, I'll be happy. What about where you're at right now? What has your sin gotten you? But I'm giving you a way to give up your sin, give up the depression, and have peace that passes all understanding. Isn't that great? Doesn't matter what's going on in your life right now, you can have peace that passes all understanding. It's through Jesus Christ. What about that depression? Jesus can take it away in an instant. Instantly. Instantly. Have you asked Him? When you woke up this morning, did you say, Jesus, what do you want me to do today? try to drown me out next time you sin you're going to hear my voice next time you sin you're going to hear my voice in your head that you're destroying yourself that Jesus Christ is the answer Jesus doesn't want you to get drunk smoke Sleep around. He doesn't want that for your life. And you know it's going to lead to bad results. But you can't stand the thought of giving up that sin. You can't stand that. Well, it's getting late. Um, not, not too bad of a night. You know, I just really wish the cop hadn't come over here and said what he said. I really wish that because I think I would have had better reactions if I could say what I wanted to say, say what's in the Bible. But they they kept me from that and I don't I don't really want to fight that. Like I said, you know, it's not it's not time, you know, for that. I may call when I get back from New Orleans, call the police department, let them know what happened, because that's just unacceptable. I mean, if there's Supreme Court decisions, he said he knew them, but then he doesn't want to obey them. So, and if the camera, I mean, I'll take a look at the tape, see if the camera came out good. I just want to try something different tonight, you know, get, get the muscles used to holding stuff and um, 
I'm, I'm having problems, you know, with the audio. So I'll try to keep the camera closer now. But I do like the fact that I can swivel this around, you know, if I'm talking to somebody. Can't do that if it's attached to the to the hand truck. I just got to deal with uh, who happens to be in the shot right then. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it depends on what happens, what kind of videos. There will be some videos after next week. I will tell you that. There will be some videos. How many, I don't know. Um, if there's going to be anything connected with the SOPA conference, I don't know. But, you know, um, I'm getting with Lonnie and Jimmy at the end of next week. So, uh, really looking forward to that. And there'll probably be some videos from that. So, uh, EC Street Preacher signing out for now.